Hello again. So the last piece we want to be able to integrate into our uh, little robot project here is some sort of a vision system. So I'm going to use this ultrasonic sensor and it will mount onto the front like so. And you're going to need just a couple extra pieces that you probably already have. And if not, you can print them. I have the uh, files for this up on Thingiverse so you can just download them and print them yourself. But this is just a little clamshell that kind of holds on to the the ultrasonic like so. A couple screws going in front. I'll put those on in a second. And this will all attach right here. And then we're going to need some male female wire so I get up to the breadboard. So let me go ahead and uh, get this guy assembled and I'll get him mounted on my robot and we'll go from there. So I'll see you in just a few seconds. Okay, so you can see I've got him mounted on my robot now and I've ran two uh, 440 screws all the way through that holds the clamshell together and then slid it, slid it inside of this bracket here with a single uh, screw and a nut on either side so I can set the, the height and the tension so I can adjust it. So now it's time to wire it up. <clears throat> I grabbed another one so we can see the, the pinouts here. Okay, It's actually labeled on the back. It's printed if you get one of these. Let me see if I can get this thing to focus here. There we go. So VCC is going to be closest over here. So we've got VCC and ground on the opposite sides. And then trigger is going to be close to the VCC. So if we orient it like this, we know that this is going to be VCC, trigger, echo, ground. So I'm going to take a white wire here, and I'm going to use that for my VCC, so my power. So I'm just going to plug that in right here. I've got a power bus. And I'll use this black wire for ground, and I'm going to go ahead and you can go anywhere on any ground bus. So I'm going to stick this guy, I can stick it over here, get it out of the way. Okay, so it's on a ground bus on that side. Then we have trigger and echo. So let me stick trigger in here, like so. And then echo will be the blue one. Now this you can stick into essentially any pin, any available pin on the Teensy, really. Um, but um, I have quite a bit of stuff filled up over on this side, so I'd have to stretch the wire kind of far. So I'm going to go ahead and stick trigger. In my case, you could do whatever you want. I'm going to stick it in pin 1, and I'm going to put echo in pin 2. Okay. So let me go ahead and load some code up, and I'll be right back. All right, so I've got something put on here. Uh, as usual, the first thing we have to do is define our pins. And so I've got the echo pin and trigger pin as trigger pin is one and echo pin is two. I created a variable called distance away or d away. And I'm actually gonna be commenting a lot of this stuff here at the end of this video. In setup, as usual, we had to set the uh, direction. So the way the, uh, the ultrasonic works is it, <clears throat> it has both an emitter and a receiver and it uses echo so one of these things is going to send out an ultrasonic ping okay so that one has to be an output that one we're going to make scream an ultrasound and then that sound is going to travel through the air it's going to hit a surface and it's going to bounce back okay and we're going to listen to it on the echo receiver and that one has to be an input that would explain why I have an output and an input on this one particular device. Uh, going down, actually I got a lot of this stuff commented out and we're not doing any motion right now. So all I've done is I've called, uh, I've created my, uh, used my D away, distance away, and what I did is called a, uh, uh, a non-void function, and I'm going to show it to you. And this is, this is going to be the total distance that I want it to look. One of the things that's frustrating is if you don't give it some finite distance you want to look, it can, you know, you can send off a signal and it'll sit there and listen for the echo and it might listen for a very long time. In robotics, you know, that means your robot might draw, drive off a table or it might miss the opponent or miss an opportunity to attack in sumo. Okay? So what you want to do is you want to confine the range that your, your ultrasonic sensor needs to work. And so I've built that into this. So I'm going to say, I don't want you to look for any more than 150 centimeters. I don't want you to wait for any echo that is outside of that range. 
So let me take you down to that piece of code, which I've got down here at the bottom. Okay. Like I said, this is a non-void function, so it's going to return something. I called it get distance. Here's that max distance. That's the time I expect. I don't want to wait any longer than this. Don't bother looking for something that's five meters away. Let's just keep it to a narrow window and it'll go faster. I've created a few variables here. Timeout, duration, and the distance in centimeter. Okay. Uh, to get this thing going, you always want to go ahead and set the trigger pin low. Make sure it's off uh, and rested for a little bit. Then we send it high for only 10 microseconds, so a very short, loud scream, a 10 microsecond pulse. And then we turn it off again. We do a quick calculation here. Like I said, I don't want to waste time waiting for a signal, you know, for an echo that may never come back. And of course, echo means that we're going to have the to account for the time it, you know, the emitter sends off the signal hits an object and comes back, so it's really twice the distance. And so what we want to do is we want to multiply that by 2 and then divide it by the speed of sound. And then what we're going to do now is we're going to listen for the duration. Okay, And the duration is going to be how long it takes for the receiver to receive that pulse back in. Okay. So where are we listening for it? We're going to listen for it on the echo pin, which we defined. We're listening for a high signal. We want the thing to get excited and pulse out a, a high signal. And we're not going to go any longer than the amount of time that we defined in timeout, which is going to be working our distance and speed of sound. Then lastly, we do a calculation. Once again, this is going to be the speed of sound in air, and we're going to be figuring out well, actually, let's not you know forget that this is actually an echo, so it has to go twice as far. So we divide that by two to get the the actual distance, and then we return that distance. So we're going to send it back to where we asked the question, and we asked the question way up here, and we said, well, the distance away is equal to whatever you get done calculating with the ultrasonic sensor, with no longer than 150 centimeters of wait time. Okay, and I'm going to display it. So let's load it up. And hopefully it'll work just fine. I put a little delay in here because just to make it easier to see. And let's just go ahead and see it on the serial monitor. All right. So I've got this. Uh, I've got an envelope here, and as I put it closer and closer, you can see it's measuring the distance quite accurately. Move it further back. That's going to be distance in centimeter. Now I got a little, a little noise there, I guess, because I had the envelope tilted away. All right. Certainly, hard objects are going to be much, much better than soft objects. Okay. So if you're looking for something like a fluffy little stuffed bunny, well, that absorbs sound, so don't expect it to work near as well. Uh, if you're, you know, if you're looking with the walls of an arena or a maze, it works very, very well because the the sound bounces off that surface very, very well. Okay, So the harder and straighter the surface, the better it is. If you have something that's a little fluffy or a little bit uh, um, soft, you might be better off to use something like a sharp sensor or something along that line. So let me pause this. I'm going to clean up this code, add some other features, and use up a couple of minutes just kind of making it look more presentable. And I'll be right back. OK, so I've been cleaning up this code a little bit here. And uh, I haven't really added anything new except for a lot of comments. So I did want to start off by saying you should always have a header file in all of your code. So I put mine on right here. Uh, a little bit of information. You can use uh, the slash star and then star slash. And everything in between is not seen by the compiler. It's just there. Notes to yourself. And then what I've done here is I've taken, you notice I've changed all of these into constants. Now that I'm pretty happy with the way my robot is set up. I've done my little play and I've got everything figured out. I decided I'm just going to go ahead and set these guys as unmodifiable variables. Let's, let's just go ahead and set them as constants. So all of these have been set to constants and they're uh, not going to be changed anywhere by accident in the code. So this is sort of fixed. Um, and then I added lots of comments as to what these actually are so you can see or I'll be able to see next year when I come up with a new version 
what all I was trying to do with all my different comments here. In setup, I've done the same sort of thing here. I put lots of comments. Some of them are obvious. Um, you know, maybe it's sort of silly to put those in, but I, I did it. Notice I've also uh, increased the size of my separation between my functions. I like to make it really easy to see, and I'm going to show you another cool technique here in just a moment to break up your program. I still haven't done anything else with this. It's still just displaying um, the uh, the information that we get from the ultrasonic. I'm going to work on that in just a moment. That's going to break it up. And then all this other stuff has been sort of cleanly separated and commented. I just didn't want to wait until the very end to overwhelm you. So I'm going to pause it again, make a few more modifications, show you some clever little tricks, and I will be right back. Okay, so let's end this uh, code with one last little logical thing, and then I'll shoot another video that kind of uh, uh, wraps up the whole uh, organizing your code and, and just making it easier to read and follow uh, in the next video. But what I've done now is I've wanted to add this some sort of decision with our ultrasonic. And uh, you can see what I've done here is I've added it to the loop. I've added it as the very first if statement. So we're going to collect the data uh, about the distance right here in this d away is equal to get distance. And then I've set it so if it, anything is less than 10 centimeters, well, it's going to go reverse for one second, and it's going to turn right for one second. So we should be able to see that pretty well. So let's go ahead and load it up. And actually, I don't have any printing. I'm going to close that. All right. So a little glitch at the beginning there, probably from a startup move. And now you can see it's going forward. And as I move my envelope closer, all right. So now it's going at reverse and right and reverse and right. And as I pull it away, it'll just keep continue to go forward. Okay, so let me end this one and I'll see you guys really soon.